Welcome to another episode of Inspired Voices. My name is Oliver Riera, and this is Coach Kenny Williams. Oliver, how you doing, man? Doing good, man. Thanks good, for coming good. by. Thanks for having me, man. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, man. <laughs> Why don't you uh, tell everybody kind of what you do? Yep. So, uh, Coach Kenny Williams, I am the owner, head coach of Pride Boxing and Fitness in Garland, North Carolina. Nice. Yep. I love your gym, bro. Uh, Honestly. Yeah. I like the style of it, too. Like, uh, the color and the scheme. It looks yeah. really clean, too. Uh, I mean, that was on purpose, <laughs> man, right? Yeah. For more than one reason, right. right? For to be, I mean, obviously, it might have helped get me on your show, which is a good thing, right? Right. Uh, <laughs> I guess but so. I mean, from a business perspective, man, branded perspective, a lot of time and energy went in to making sure it yeah. looked it seems right that, that's what it seems yep. like. Like yeah. everything from like even the stitching of the punching bags just looks clean. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean, yeah, man. Uh, and the one thing I love about your gym, also one of the major things, is how humble and respectful everyone is. Uh, like from all ages, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter who it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I wonder where does that come from? Is that something that you instill in your gym? Absolutely. I think uh, you know, for me, uh, leading by example, mm -hmm. right, has always been. Um, uh, the lead people who I follow most are, are the ones that kind of led by example. So, uh, you know, things like um, uh, integrity, mm -hmm. having a high moral compass, mm -hmm. right? Those are things that, um, you know, I, for me personally uh, are very high on my list and everybody in my orbit, you know, yeah. uh, I, I, I feel uh, has to oblige. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. Does right? that, cause like, I've been to other gyms and stuff like mm -hmm. that, and there's a there's a clear difference between a gym yeah. that is made for fighters and a gym who not to say that yours is not isn't like this because yeah. you have fitness as well. I do, right? I do. Um, but from what I've seen personally, yeah. only the boxing part of it, um, it is a clear difference between a real like real fighting gym yeah. and someone who's just learning taking the class just to yeah. learn some stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, there is, there is. Um, and I'm trying to figure out like, what, wh which why, one? why, no, not which one, oh, but like okay. why, what, which? what makes it the difference? Cause like the teachers know what they're teaching, mm -hmm. but you have those students that don't have perfect form. Yeah. yeah. But they're still like going through the routines and stuff like that. And maybe it's about the details that's of it. that. You, that's it. You know, I, I think, uh, if, even if going back to like the culture, right, mm -hmm. that I kind of set at my gym, I think um, what's important to me are the details, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that's what kind of shows when you see my guys, you mm -hmm. know, I think, um, I mean, just to say it as honest I could, as I could say it, I think, you know, for me, um, just with my experience and kind of where I've been, um, I've learned that or if I've seen it, uh, Sometimes, man, you know, some of these gyms, I'm not, you know, I'm not naming any specific gym, man, but uh, sometimes I look at it as the blind leading the blind, right? Mm. Especially um, when you talk about the difference between a, a fight gym and a fitness type gym, right? right? Um, you know, I think it's hard to, to lead in a way that you're not, or, or kind of create an atmosphere, a fight atmosphere when you don't have, um, you know, some type of history in the fight mm. arena, right? Right. Um, so not to say that it can't happen, but, sure. uh, I, you know, I, from my observation, you know, that's kind of what I've seen in, in the North Carolina racket. There are some really um, good fight gyms, mm. right? But they're far and few in between because mm. I uh, I think that, 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 that experience part of it. Mm. Right? Okay, yeah, I mean... Yeah. I Yep. There's a difference between training and fighting. Absolutely. <laughs> and watching YouTube. Nowadays, YouTube is a big thing, right? Right. Yeah. So Learn a lot from it. Absolutely. Not to say that you can, but there's some things that, you know, that are hardcore uh, experience things, mm -hmm. right? That's yeah. going to come out. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's why sparring is important, right? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. Absolutely. I think one of my old teachers said, like, you, you mm -hmm. can train at a level 10, but once you get into a fight, it goes down to like a six or a five or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it, the training should be harder than the fight, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I like that. where are you from, man? I'm originally from New Haven, Connecticut. Okay. Right. Um, 
Been in North Carolina now for some time, though. So I tell yeah. people, man, I moved here uh, ninth grade. So ninth grade, uh, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'll, not without sharing my, it, it was some time ago. So sure. I was between here and Connecticut for some years. Oh, what um, brought you down here? Uh, really, man. Mom just wanted a better life, man. You know? Okay. Um, was it was it a rough part of Connecticut or something? It was. It was, man. My my uh, yeah, it was interesting. So my mom was fourteen years old when she had twin boys Damn. in a project of projects of New Haven, Connecticut. Damn. Yeah. So it was. Uh, That's tough. Yeah. Yeah, was she, man. Was she by herself? She was. Damn. That's even worse. She was, man. Yeah, she was. It is a uh, uh, borderline miraculous, mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, my brother and I, my twin brother and I turned out the way we did. Oh, you got a twin. I have a twin. Yeah, I have a twin. I know that. Yep, mm -hmm. I have so a twin. So you might be him. No, no, no. We totally, Oliver, two totally different people, man. Really? Totally different. Okay. Boxing, fighting, not his thing. Oh, okay. All yeah, right. yeah, right. my thing. So you. You meet them one day. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. We get you meet them. Twins, man. Yeah. And then growing up in a project with a single mom. Single mom. Yep. Yep. This is, yeah. Do you think um, in terms of single moms growing up in a project, yeah. is everyone a little bit more of a community? Uh, yeah. So uh, from what I hear, that's what kind of, that's what it was. Man. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, um, my, I had a my 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 family is very a very close knit family, mm. right? So, um, yeah, I, I was raised by my mom, aunt, uncles, mm. grandfather. Yeah, uh, you know what I mean. So, um, I think all those influences, mm -hmm. obviously, all those influences around us, um, you know, kind of steered us in the right direction. And truthfully, you know, the move that my mom made to get us. It, the North Carolina was obviously a big decision as well. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah man. Um, yeah. So, well, so you had the influence of other family members, mm -hmm. which means like you kind of had a maybe a father figure, like uh, with the uncles and stuff like that, or. Yeah. So um, I, I guess uh, I mean you could say that I also had my stepfather, so I can't okay. omit. So he was probably, uh, so my mom meets my stepfather. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he was in North Carolina for some time, years and years ago, knew mm -hmm. it would be a really good place to raise kids and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, one day, decided to get up, leave, and uh, here I am. So I can't omit uh, his influence as well, sure. uh, younger. Yeah. Um, but what I will say, you know, I have, Son, daughter, right, 19, 17 years old. Um, the way that I raised them and the father and dad that I am to them, I didn't have. Mm -hmm. Don't say it that way. Yeah. yeah. Right. I think that uh, yep. it can be a good influence. And then if mm -hmm. I think if you have that lack of self-awareness, it could also be a, a problem. Absolutely. <laughs> As well. Yep. Uh, was, uh, was there a lot of fighting involved? As yeah, a kid, yeah, absolutely. So I think that's, I mean, obviously, that's what kind of led me to where I am now. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I was, uh, you know, being older now, obviously, uh, a lot of traumatic experiences. Mm -hmm. You know, why I fought, I really couldn't get, you know, at the time. Now that I'm older, a little bit older, and understand it, there were, um, um, uh, uh, you know, a lot of insecurities, right? Yeah. So I was. Was uh, that coming from? What was that coming from? Oh man, because like for me, like it just comes yep. from you know obviously yep. the childhood and like that's it. My my dad's anger and and, and mm. abusiveness and stuff like that. So no man, same same. You know, had a a um you know a a uh, very traumatic experience mm. um of abuse wise abuse wise. So for years, you know, it was something that I um. You know that I I held tight because I didn't want people questioning. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, my yeah, like everything. Was, yeah, everything was fine with you, my right? Manhood, yeah, man. But it it, it also created this uh, this shell of or this person that had to be tougher mm. and bigger because I didn't want anybody to know some of the things that happened to me younger. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. trying to protect 
my manhood, mm-hmm. right? So that that I would say that obviously, you know, I didn't, you know, because of the way that I was raised, my mom, we didn't have a whole lot, and you know, there was it was a lot of a lot of um, uh, like I said, traumatic experiences yeah. that happened to me very very young, man. That that uh, obviously, you know, caused a lot of issues. Uh, on my way to where I am now, but but you know it, it's also the reason why I do what I do now, and yeah. the culture that I've been able to create. Um, you know, I understand the demographic that mm-hmm. I work with. Yeah, because right? you've it, seen it before. You've been there before. Right? Absolutely, right. So yeah. the, it, it creates this. You know, it it it, it literally is divine. It was divine. I always tell people, it was, you know, it was divine. Right? Mm-hmm. So it had to happen. Now being older. Um, obviously, man, I'm, I'm extremely blessed, man. I've been able to, you know, when I first started my gym, mm-hmm. right, when I first started doing the things that I do, man, uh, you know, I, I can remember sitting on, you know, sitting watching, uh, uh, you know, Oscar De La Hoya, all these guys, yeah. and all these, you know, these cards and saying one day, you know what, I'm going to mortgage the house and I'm going to be there. You know, I've had the <laughs> opportunity. Yeah. You know, to to be ringside with my guys, mm-hmm. and we fought the fight on uh, did these different platforms. Yeah. So, um, so like when you were a kid and you were going through those, I'm yeah. all, obviously, I'm assuming that you've been through fights as a kid. Absolutely. And so, yeah. was it was yeah. it? And then you 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 said you had to act tough, right, mm-hmm. to hide that insecurity. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, does that mean that you were? Were you that kind of? I just saw a video recently of the guys like, oh yeah, you know, he was acting like. Yeah. Uh, this, is, yeah. this guy's looking at me funny, man. I don't know. like, And then like you would kind of get into a fight that way. Yeah, so I was the, yeah, I get it. So <laughs> I I was the the guy, I was the kid in a in a group that, uh, you know, the, I'm the set it off guy, mm. right? Mm. We don't like him. Okay, cool. Let me go set it off. I'm the one stealing them yeah. and now it's on. Right. Yeah. All right. That 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 was me. Yeah. Right? I'm the one uh I'm I'm attracted. I was always attracted again. So I have a twin, right? Mm-hmm. He was the nice twin. I was the the mean twin. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's attracted to all the right things. Right. Right. I was always all always attracted to all the the wrong things. Right. Because it the wrong do sometimes doing those wrong things is what got me the attention mm-hmm. that I was uh seeking for. And it was it was able I was able to uh kind of hide, uh, like we say, all those insecurities mm-hmm. behind the being tough guy stuff. Yeah. Right? Do you remember your first fight? Yo, oh, yeah. Well, my first one. So, listen, I, I have a twin brother, man. Yeah. So, man, <laughs> listen, it was. Besides your brother. Yeah. Besides your brother. Oh, man, we fought, I, we fought every day, walking to school and coming back home. Damn. Yeah, man, it was. It so, was, there was no fear. Yeah, I mean, it was fear. Yeah, man, it's, it's, it was fear, man. It was, it was again to me, it was traumatic. Mm. I remember there was a, a, you know, I would go to, I would have to go to the bomb bus stop. Uh, man, this is, and I think about this now, man. I'm in the fifth and sixth grade, man. Mm. With it, I remember a, a, a specific. I was at my grandfather's house. We were watching uh, WrestleMania. Mm. I had a jacket on and he found a knife in it. Mm. Right? He mm. found a knife in it. Yeah. And I remember, you know, him going, him going crazy. My mom's going crazy. And right, and at the time, you know, again, the the lens, right, I was the bad one. Right. But I remember uh not being able to make the connection between them um, them having the understanding of me going to the bus stop every day, having a fight. Mm. Right, so for me, so you it was felt like you had to. I yeah. had to. Gotcha. Right, it wasn't. It wasn't a, you know, there wasn't to them. They saw it one way, but to me, I don't remember. You know, my brother and I walk in. This is like the first. This is the first actual memory that I have of of uh, when it became real. Mm-hmm. Right? I remember walking to the bus stop one day with my brother. Um, we had a, we had our buddy Zach with us. There was a kid from a, a neighborhood that, you know, our side of the street really didn't do a whole lot with. He yeah. rode up on his bike and put a gun to my boy Zach head, mm-hmm. right? And told him he'll kill him. Got on his bike, kept riding. God damn. From that, in, in that 
that scenario. It's fifth grade. This is fifth grade. Damn. This is this is this is in the fifth grade. Yeah, man. I was a I was a little guy, yeah. right? So, uh, but but you asked my first man. It was scenarios like that. I man, getting jumped home, mm -hmm. jumped on our way home. We had to go through the. We had to go through all. Nowadays they call them ops, right? Mm -hmm. So we had to. We got dropped off in their neighborhood, and we had to walk home. My brother and I had to walk home. Man. Right. Damn. So every day at two thirty, man, we used to hate getting on the bus to go home because mm. we knew what it was. Yeah. Right? You try to tell your mom that I did, man. It did. Yeah, they just it's not really a, a connection with them. It, it, well, at the time it was. Oh, her. Yeah, yeah. At the time, at the time it wasn't. You know, I mean, I and now being older, you know, I'm, I'm. My mom was how? What was she? Twenty. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. At that time, right. Yeah. Right. Young, you know, young still. Young man. You know, and, and and it was uh, you know, now again, kind of getting back to you talk about the dad situation, being the, being able to be the dad that I always wanted, right? Mm -hmm. So you get older and you see, and you realize there's a there's a lifestyle that my kids have that I didn't get a chance to have, right? But I'm, I'm saying that to say the understanding part of it. At the time, it was normal for her. Yeah. It was no big, she fought every day coming home, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And the environment that it's, we it's lived in. you had to do. It's, yeah. right. it's the environment we lived in, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, me saying it, you know, like again, that same situation with my grandfather. I can remember at the time not being able to connect the dots, man. Yeah. You know, now that I'm older, uh, a lot wiser, right? Mm -hmm. um, man, you know, you're able to kind of connect those dots and forgive and, and mm -hmm. uh, understand, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You know, you go you go through that process. Did you right? have to. You felt like you had to like forgive your mom and stuff like that. Absolutely, yeah. man. That was a that was. A, Man, if I'm honest about it, man, you know, this is probably relatively, uh, man, man, within the last five years, man, within the last five years, I would say I I finally uh, kind of let it, let some things go. Right? Mm, I kind of yeah. had to just, you know, and, then, and there are times that, like with any trauma, man, when things happen and you got to, and all these feelings, mm -hmm. You know, come back. Yeah. Right. And but you gotta you know, just and they come back in different forms too. It does. It does. Yeah. yeah. In different stages of your life. Especially the more you grow. Yeah. It comes back in different forms. Like, yeah. man, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so we could we could I thought cuss. I was done with this. Oh, okay. I didn't know I could cut. We oh, could yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So we, we okay, I like it. All right. Yeah, yeah. But but exactly. Yeah. Right. So so you know, um we we uh, it's, it's funny, man. My mom and I last weekend we did the Michael Jackson. Uh, right. They had the man. Yeah, you and yeah. you and I kind of went together, man. Yeah. I went with my mom, man. We had a good. I'm awesome. looking for those opportunities mm -hmm. to connect and make up for lost time with her now, man. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man. So, man. That, that's that's yeah. really good to say, especially because like yeah. it's been, you know, you were talking about fifth grade and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it goes to show you that it doesn't matter what age you are. You could be 60, 70 years old and still find yourself still trying to forgive others yeah. and stuff like your mom, mm -hmm. your parents and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, absolutely. absolutely. Did you find yourself, um, were you ever like influenced uh, any way out? Like uh, going to like the nice neighborhoods or something like that? Mm, influence. So, so what do you mean exactly? Um, I, I mean like. Cause like all you knew was your neighborhood. Oh yeah, okay. So like there was no other influence outside of that. There wasn't. Well, actually, no. Let me tell you this. So in, uh, wow, man, this is a really good one. I'm enjoying this. Wow. <laughs> this is a really good one. So man, uh, the, the the so the reason why I had to get dropped off in the neighborhood, right mm -hmm. in the in the uh, opposition neighborhood, was because my brother and I, we got uh, man again in divine man, we got. Uh, selected to uh, uh, to to be at a, a arts or well, basically we call it a magnet school here. Right? Okay, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So which was on the total opposite side of town. Mm -hmm. The elementary school that I went to was all black, mm -hmm. right? This school was it was mixed. I, I until middle of that in, in fifth grade actually starts middle started middle school at the time where okay. I'm from. Yeah, right? it's a little bit different here. Yeah, but it was a totally different. Uh, uh, man, 
set of teachers, uh, kids, people, right? <laughs> that shit's got to be shocking, man. Oh, shit, it was a, it was, a, <laughs> it was a culture shock, man. Yeah, vibe, you know. But and, you know, there was some good and bad things came out of that. That's yeah. I think that's where I mean, we talked about the the resentment, you know, mm. kind of when you see how other people are living. You're like, right. damn, why can't yeah. I have that? And listen, then you get on the bus and you get bus right back to the projects, man. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, it, it's damn. it's two totally different worlds, that's, man. That's exhausting oh. mentally. Well, you know, at that age, you don't know any better, though. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. All you know is, I, I can remember how I felt the feeling. Mm-hmm. Right? I can mm-hmm. remember how I felt. But to me, it was, at the time, it was, uh, man, it was just how it was. Yeah. Right? Um, that culture shock, how, how long did it uh, take for you to get used to it? Yeah, I mean, now, <laughs> I mean, thinking back that, I mean, I, you know, it was after a while, uh, I mean, it was, I played in band, right? So okay. I got bland, I played the drums for a little while, yeah. and obviously, you know, you, you, you develop friendships. I had white friends, I had Puerto Rican friends, mm-hmm. right? Whereas, you know, in elementary school, everybody I knew was black, everybody I saw up until elementary school. Yeah. I mean, oh, I'm sorry, up until middle school, everybody I ever saw was black. Right. Right? You, you, we went out. I mean, obviously, it's uncomfortable at first, but you, you know, I joined band. You start making white friends, Puerto Rican friends, mm-hmm. and, you know, and it, it becomes, you know, I, it didn't take long. Kids don't take long to. That's true. Yeah, because they, they don't think about the, I guess, the, the um, I guess, the long-term effect of it, or they don't think about it in deep, in deep they thought. Don't. The experience is not there. Right. They, right you right. know what I mean? So yeah. the experience to be able to know, you know, or, or hold on to, yeah. you know what I mean? They don't, right. they, you know, as a kid, you don't have it. It was actually, to be honest with you, man, it was more of a culture shock for me moving from Connecticut to North Carolina. Really? That was, to me, that was like moving to a whole nother country, man. Was it like, did you move to the country part or something? Where'd you move to? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, so... Since we're setting this up, man, I'm loving this, by the way. Loving this, by the way. But, you know, the only time I ever been in North Carolina was to see a great grandmother who lived right, like, right outside of Sanford. Oh, shit. Okay. And so the shit was, when I say country, yeah. I mean, she had a farm. And mm-hmm. I didn't know Raleigh and Durham and Charlotte existed. Right. Right. At the I thought time. North Carolina was Sanford. I thought the shit was Just exactly what I was <laughs> See, so they moved. Yeah. They moved us to Raleigh, which was still, you know, slower. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, mm-hmm. uh, man, different. You know, but the, the, you know, the, the scene, the setting, obviously, was something to get used to. But it was uh, mainly the people, the kids, the way I talked. Mm-hmm. I remember mm-hmm. when I first got down here, man. There was a, a, a girl who said I talked like Arnold Schwarzenegger, man. So for years, <laughs> bro. For years, I hated talking to people, Damn. right? So it, I'm just saying it was, it was. I mean, from the way we dressed uh-huh. to the way the kids in the down south dressed to yeah. the way I talked mm-hmm. to the way I looked to, uh, um, you know, where I'm from, uh, you know, baseball was big. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I got introduced to some boxing there down here. Basketball was the big thing. Basketball and football was the big thing. Mm. So my brother and I didn't play basketball and football when we got here. And that was kind of a way to, you know, for, for, you know, kids to get status. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I couldn't play. I remember that was traumatic for me. So for a whole Mm. summer, man, I played basketball. I ended up, you know, being really good, played middle school, high, same thing with football. Mm -hmm. But that first year being here where kids use that to kind of measure you up, Man, yeah. it was, it was, man, it was traumatic. That was a traumatic experience. Yeah. Yeah, right? I bet. I bet. Yeah. Was it, uh, was, yeah. did you still go to a magnet school down here or was it, uh, I didn't. No, no I didn't. So it was, uh, I actually, it was actually a, we moved in eighth grade. So my, my, um, my eighth grade year, I went to Daniels Middle School okay. in Raleigh, which is now, I think, Oberlin Road. Yeah, yeah, school, something is, yeah. like that. Oh, is it? Yeah, oh, I didn't know they changed, always, the they changed the name. Yeah, oh, they changed weird. the name. Some of the kids at the gym. <laughs> that's how. That's the only way I knew. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then my parents moved again mm-hmm. uh, out to the the um, closer to Wake Forest area. So I went to a high school. Yeah, this, uh, I don't Forest. think there was anything out there and at that time. It's not the Wake Forest that we see now. Yeah, no, it's it's all established now. Yep. 
<laughs> nowhere near it, Oliver. Nowhere near it. Yeah. Man. Woods. Mm-hmm. So you got it. You said you got into boxing a little bit in Connecticut. Yeah. So I, I was uh, uh, I was introduced there. Mm-hmm. Right? I was introduced there. Um, it it but true. When I start talking about my boxing story, it really didn't. I really didn't take off. Take off until uh, I got to college uh, and ran into Coach Willie Massey in Durham. Right. But uh, but yep. before that. Yep. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't kind of like you weren't going to classes regularly or anything like that. Yeah. So what happened was, so in, in, uh, not actually the second, that that second move, I moved closer to Wake Forest. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a guy named Jeff Gil, Gilchrist from Philadelphia mm-hmm. who lived, uh, up the hill from me. And, uh, I, like I said, I was the neighborhood knucklehead, man. And he, she, he saw me, man. He, he saw. You were still the mean guy? Nah. Were you still the mean guy? I was still the mean guy, okay. bro. This is relatively. Yeah. Man, uh, <laughs> this, you know, man, I, I, man, this is when I say new, man, I still get people who see me from high school and can't believe that yeah. I'm doing the stuff that I'm doing. Really? No. They, they see me from high school and they're like, man, they're you. looking at me like, right. Turned your life around. Wow. You know, <laughs> right. Wow, man. But, yeah. you know, back to the story though, yeah. man, yeah. I, I ran into Jeff. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was a guy from Philly, man. Uh, he started working with me, and, and I had the boy Vince at the time. And man, the uh, long story short, man, I, I fell in love, man. Yeah. Every day at three thirty, Monday through Friday, man, I was at Jeff's house, and we were working. Yeah. And then now that the, the um, you know, in North Carolina, man, boxing. You believe it, even now? I don't know. We're probably going to end up going here. But boxing in North Carolina, believe it or not, man, is not a big. Mm-hmm. We we fight, you know. That's kind of the thing that I, that there's a chip on my shoulder and that I put on my competitive guy's shoulder. The fact that they're from North Carolina, man, because it's not what it is. Yeah. Other places. Mm-hmm. It's not like you know, uh, uh, what is it, Chicago? Well, Chicago's or, a spot. Um, Philadelphia. Philly. Philly. That's what I meant. Philly. Yeah, Philly's yeah. a big place. Uh, uh, Ohio. Yeah. Pumps out some really, really good fighters. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there's New York, man. It's upstate New York. Yeah. Has some good, but very few here, man. Very few. Yeah. Yeah. Very uh, few. Why'd you get into boxing, though? Uh, I mean, I know you had lots of fights before, right? Yeah. But is that what transitioned you into boxing? It is. Okay. It is, man. Like I said, Jeff saw. He's all potential. First I was. Yeah, okay. man. You know, I mean, it's just like now, man, it's a way to channel it, right? So yeah. to, to be able to punch somebody in the face and not get in trouble for it mm-hmm. was very appealing to me. Mm. Right, mm-hmm. man? To see somebody's face explode. Yeah. And, I don't, and I'm not suspended from school and right. they're not telling my mom. And not, that is what initially drew me to the sport of boxing. Mm-hmm. Right? And it just became an outlet for you? It did, it was, yeah. it was very much. But it humbled me as well, right? Mm. Uh, man, mm-hmm. the first ass whooping I got in the well from, you know, Jeff, man, was a humbling experience, mm-hmm. man, you know? It, it, there was a lot of, I mean, a lot of virtues I took out of that. Like, yeah. You're not the baddest motherfucker on the planet, <laughs> yeah. right? I and love it. it. When, yeah. I, when I did MMA and stuff like that, I, I loved it when you guys came in with ego because yeah, they would absolutely. get humbled. Oh, quick. Yep. <laughs> I see it. Every, we get it. We get one or two of those a month. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we get one or two. Yeah. We got anyone from the street saying, hey, I don't all want to fight. Oh, I, all the time. Yeah. And this, they'll come in earlier when I have like my box, my salter groups in, mm-hmm. right? They're a thousand and all on the street. Yeah. They want to fight my best guy. Yeah. And I always tell them, listen, come back at 630. I'm going to make your dreams come true, buddy. I'll make them come true. <laughs> as long as they're 18, yeah. we could verify that. They yeah. could sign a waiver. Mm-hmm. Man, I let them have at it. And you already know what happens. I yeah. You know it. And I haven't, I had one guy that did pretty well, to be mm-hmm. honest with you, man. Oh, really? Yeah, I had one guy. This okay. was years, years ago. He never came back, though. Oh, damn. Yeah. So he had potential. Well, uh, yeah, man. So, you know, I mean, he, you know, he, 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 he took it. He mm. took it, mm. right? He took it. Normally, that you know how it is, man. First thirty seconds, they're going out, man. This he lasted three rounds. Right? Damn. For okay. Me, for me, that was a, a coming from the streets. That's that's, a, that's a long time. That's a win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the it was his uh, 
the man his resilience, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. And his uh man, to be able to fight through opposition, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's that's it, because that's the world that we're in. Mm-hmm. Right? It's not always gonna go your way, but how do you respond mm-hmm. to that? And this kid, man, he kept getting back in there. Yeah. Right? Mo- most of them are done after the first 30 seconds. Yeah. That's nah. true. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So man. your brother never got into it? Never got into it. Got into it. <laughs> but we, we're polar opposite. We're total opposite. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There, it, even if you go back to the, I mean, he, the way he handled his trauma is different than mine, right? Mm. So, you know. Probably he, more um, like therapy or and stuff like that. or Yeah. So, um, mm, you know, um, I mean, I, I think, um, you know, he, he, he probably, well, I want to say the way he, he sees the world a little bit different than I than I did. Yeah. I, if I'm honest, man, what I love about my brother is that he got it a lot sooner than I did. Mm. Right? right? So he, you know, whereas uh, I, I it, historically, I've been, a, I've been uh, known to hold grudges. Mm-hmm. He's been able to forgive. You know, he was able to forgive and understand, you mm-hmm. know, get that part of it a lot sooner. Do you think so, it's because of uh, maybe he got the self-awareness Sooner? I, absolutely. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. You know, my brother is a very spiritual person. Mm. Not that I, could, I would consider myself spiritual too, to be honest, but the way we go about practicing our spirituality is a little different. Yeah. yeah. But um, he probably went in the Western world the most uh, conventional mm-hmm. Christian way about it. Right. Sure. So, so um, you know, at a young age, he, he, he he gave his life to the Lord, man, and so he, you know, there was there was a lens on life that he had that I didn't have. Gotcha. Right. So he, yeah. you know, so he was able to kind of process, you know, which uh, again, man, to me, you know, it was was a blessing, man, a blessing mm-hmm. for him. You know, mm-hmm. I, uh, you know, again, like I, if I didn't do some of the stuff I did, and if I didn't go through some of the stuff that I went through, yeah. Um, I wouldn't be sitting here with you today. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, Major he, his way was just a little different. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. as long as eventually we learn our <laughs> lessons yeah, and have that self awareness, yeah. you know, then we're good. That's it. That's <laughs> it. That's it, man. Um, yeah. I know you mentioned that yeah. you know fighting humbled you and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and I'm still trying to figure out a way to tell some of these parents. I was like, yeah, man, they should put them in like a boxing gym or or some type of martial arts or something like that. Oh no, but I don't want them to fight. I'm like, there's so much more to fighting than just the actual fight. Absolutely. And, uh, but ha- have you ever had the student where it was like, uh, they're training at your gym, but they're still having problems like fighting outside of the gym? Uh, man, that's, I don't attract that. I, and again, getting back to what we, with that culture piece, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I, I don't, those type kids don't last longer in our gym. Oh. Interesting. Right. I mean, now don't get me wrong. I mean, do I get kids who come in and they develop, you know, obviously on a on on our side of it, the boxing side of it, and still have some issues outside? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But the fighting part of it, I tell them, I mean, because this is if you're gonna fight, this is not the gym for you. Mm-hmm. I'm teaching you how to box. There's a difference. Sometimes we gotta fight when we box, mm-hmm. right? But there's a difference. Right. So if you like, I get, you know, I get them that come. I got a kid now. He's probably, uh, man, if he decides to really, really buckle down and get serious about this, yeah. he's going to be a world champ one day. Nice. Came to me. The mom came to me. I don't know what to do with this kid fighting the fights in the bathroom. Mm. Right. Name is Trevor Atkinson. Like, I got to give him, I'm say his name. And if you, if he stays with it. Yeah. Right. But even that kid, he was a kid that fought all over all over, all the time. He got to our gym, man, and he understood. Yeah. And that part, I mean, does mom still come and he's not cleaning his room, he's talking shit and all mm-hmm. that happens. But mm-hmm. the fighting part, man, rarely do I get a kid like that. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> man. No, no, man. This I it's the culture, man, that it's the culture of my gym. Man. Mm-hmm. This is not I'm not teaching you how to Come out and, and uh, do this shit in the backyard. Right. 
Yeah. Right. And if yeah. you got to respect me and the, the art itself, man, mm -hmm. and you do that by, uh, you know, keeping this shit here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Let it all out. Man. Yeah. Yeah, right. man. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I never, I never would fuck with any of your fighters. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, man, listen. I'm, Even I'm the ones that hey. don't actually fight, you know what I mean? Nah. <laughs> well, I'm, a, well, I, but no, nah, man, listen, I'm watching you. So I see you do, man. You do. Everybody is not a killer in my gym. I'll say it that way. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. They just Everybody. look. They just look. The form looking, is so hey, good. Hey, that's it. That's <laughs> it. Right. That's that's it. But but I, but you come in, man. I got some guys. You you probably, man. You know. I mean, it's a process for everybody too. You it's know, true. I got someone, I got some learning mm -hmm. on their way. You know, uh, actually, last night, man, we had a, we had a. Uh, I'm, I'm to be honest with you, I'm here with a heavy heart a little bit, man. Oh, was that? Yeah, we so we did a show. We worked with a group last night. Did a show here in Raleigh, yeah. amateur show. Mm -hmm. And uh, kid, man, uh, the last ten years I've been doing this, only had three kids to actually get stopped, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, he got stopped last night. For the people who don't know, what was oh, that? Oh yeah, that's good. So uh, the referee stops the fight. Okay, just right? for some reason, right? Now, I mean, nine times out of ten is because you get this, you get your ass whooped, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So um, I mean, we knew we were fighting up a little bit. We were fighting tougher a little bit. This is first what we call open fight. Okay. So in the amateur world, uh, you know, anything a fighter with. 10 fights or less will be considered a novice. Okay. Right? Once you go 10 fights higher, you will be considered an open fighter. And uh, novice, in the novice world, they try to keep you, well, there's some technically, some rules change, but they'll try to have you work with other novice fighters. Mm -hmm. Once you open up, you could be fight 11, and you're fighting, you could be fighting a kid with 300 fights. Oof. Right? So gotcha. we, it was that scenario for us last night. So yeah. we knew we were going to be fighting tough. Uh, I didn't realize how tough. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, I mean, and look, man, my kid fought tough. He fought hard, man. But there's some better than 14 year olds on this planet. Yeah, I don't have the baddest 14 year olds on the planet. There's some better. Yeah. So yeah. That, there's yeah. always going to be someone better. Every every, better. every year, man. So you know, and that part of the game, part of the you know culture that I try to develop in my gym as well. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. So you come in. There's some guys, man, that I might need you to come in, Oliver, and, yeah. and, and put some paws on them. Okay. Yeah. Just let me know. I got it. <laughs> I got you, man. Yeah. Yeah, I got you, man. Uh, yeah. So you came in here ninth grade, well, eighth grade. Mm -hmm. uh, you did your thing here. You started mm -hmm. boxing. Mm -hmm. um, what was the next step for you then? Yeah, uh, are you saying as far as their transition to the coaching piece? Well, because he started training in boxing. Yeah, in, uh, what's his name? With Jeff. Yeah, Jeff, yeah, with Jeff. in his backyard. Yeah, well, well, and, just training with him. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, yep. Uh, the next transition. The next transition would be wow. competition, right? Yeah. So, um, so uh, that's where. Uh, so I went to college at North Carolina Central. Okay. Uh, in Durham. Okay. Uh, gotcha. When I got, so I, I went to North well, I got there, and there was a gym five minutes up the road, mm -hmm. and that's where I met, uh, was who I consider to be my coach now, Coach uh, Willie Massey okay. in uh, Durham. He's in Durham right now. Nice. And he's the one that I really, uh, that I really, you know, Jeff, you know, Jeff, I gave him, man, he started me all, but uh, under Coach Massey is where I, where I, I learned Mm -hmm. right, where what I, made you I go to him? Uh, man, honestly, he was just, he was closest, man. Okay, yeah. I mean, yeah. I was in college. I couldn't, closest gym I could get to. Yeah, I mean, that it, makes sense. It, it was his at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Yeah, and with coaches, you know, like, there's always going to be that first coach Absolutely. that got you there, right? But then there comes a time where it's like, okay, I need to step up the level. And yeah. that sometimes requires a different coach. Yeah, it, it can mm -hmm. if your coach is limited. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Right. You get back I guess how do you? Oh, what? I was thinking like, how do you know your coach is limited? But then like, I thought back to my like acting days and uh -huh. how like I flatlined after a while. Interesting. And I was like, oh, maybe that's that's the limit there. Uh -huh. where I needed to go up to take a yeah. coach or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I and I think you know I think um, personally with. Uh, you know, I think, I mean, and after a while, sometimes it's the voice. 
Mm. Oh, interesting. Right. So sometimes what happens, what I know is even with my son, uh-huh. like I've been, my son got this high ranked, this high fifth in the nation, man. But there was a point in time. What, in boxing? In boxing. Yes, Damn. sir. Yeah, he was a fifth ranked kid in the nation. And they retired on me. Wow. <laughs> They were tired. That's yeah. a whole nother story, yeah, right? Yeah. But um, but I could see that at, there was a point in time where where I would bring Coach Mass and my coach in, mm-hmm. man, and he could get everything out of my son that I couldn't get out of him, mm-hmm. right? Because I mean, obviously you know, I'm dead, but I could tell there would be times where I would need to bring in another voice, yeah, right? Yeah. Bring in another voice for him. Gotcha. Yep. And okay. I, so I see that happen sometimes. Right. Sometimes it's not just it's just your, your, the voice gets stale. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. why even with my guys now, my pros, I try to keep them on the road, man. I keep them on the road. We go to Philly. You know, oh, different, got, different uh, competitions? Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Well, even so for my pro guys, it, it's more uh, training, right? Mm-hmm. Amateurs, I always, my and we, we always, throughout the years, I never wanted any of my, my kids to be happy with being big a big fish in a small pond. So I always travel with them gotcha. to these places. Um, yeah. But even with my pros, it's a little bit different. The way you train an amateur fighter and the way that you train a pro fighter is totally different. Mm-hmm. Right? My pro guys that I have with me now, they've been with me since they were little guys. Yeah. Um, so I know my voice sometimes gets stale. Mm-hmm. So I don't, you know, I have coaching uh, partners all over the country, man. You know. Oh, know. that's what you mean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when you say you say go all over, yeah, you I bring mean, like different, different coaches. coaches. Absolutely, and we'll go different gotcha. places so they they see. They get a different feel. They get mm. a different look, right? They get, I mean, obviously for us, the sparring is big. Mm-hmm. So they get to get in there with different guys and see different. And I learn too, right? I'm still as a, I still consider my, until one of these guys get me a, a world title, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm still learning too. So I enjoy going and learning something new and, and I can keep it fresh for them as well. Mm-hmm. All right? So if you don't have a coach a willing to grow and, and do those kind of, I mean, you got outgrown. Yeah, right? it's not just the student that needs to grow, it's, yeah. it's the coach. I didn't think about that. Absolutely. So that makes complete sense. Yep, yeah. absolutely, man. So um, what takes the world title? Whew, man. Because it can't be just wins, 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 right? Right. Uh, there's there's a little bit more to that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I mean, I, I think, man, there's a, a recipe, uh, yeah. man, of, uh, Obviously, man, hard work. Uh, there's a, a, a mindset. There's mm-hmm. a there's a, a certain type uh, person. I, I man, it's it is it's like making it to the NFL. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one or making it to the NBA, man. This is I. But with with the specifically, man, I got one uh, that I worked with. He was he fought uh, recently on a big platform overtime. Um, we didn't get the decision we wanted, Javon Woodard Jr. Yeah. Man, he. Uh-huh. Uh, we didn't get the decision we wanted, man. But he fought, man, his heart out, right? I've, I've seen his stuff, man. Yeah, yo, he, he works hard, man. He's a <laughs> he is a workhorse. But what I tell people, man, is he did everything he was supposed to do for this fight, mm-hmm. biggest fight of his career, right? Everything he was supposed to do. There was some things in camp, man. Like you know, I won't. We're not making any excuses. Like he had some ankle stuff, but right. man, he was in the gym two times a day. He had the man. I'm pushing him as far as I could push him. Mm-hmm. He's pushing himself, and we're having these conversations. We're, we're, we're I mean, it's from a tactical uh, perspective, man, we're preparing. We knew exactly what we had with this guy. Yeah, and, and we still didn't get the decision we wanted. Right, right. So I'm saying that to say, like, man, when people ask, like, what, well, man, there, you have to be, oh, man, possessed. Mm. Man, you have to be possessed. Mm-hmm wanting to be a world champion. Yeah. Right. But not just that, but I'm correct me if I'm wrong, but it's also the business side as well. Absolutely. That that's a, and I feel like a lot of people forget about that when it comes uh, to the arts. Yeah. That is good. Man. I'm <laughs> glad you brought that up. But yeah. I but here's what I believe I believe, you know, what I what I've seen even with my guys. Mm-hmm. Right. So my guys, um all of them, you know, all my, I'm speaking specifically about my pro guys, Calvin Dickerson, Keyshawn Horn, mm-hmm. um, and Javon Water. Man, all of them are um, the talent. When you talk about the talent, man, they have it. Yeah. Right. And I believe that that is what's going to make room for them. Mm. 
right? So if, if you are what, what, you, what everybody thinks you are, then that is what's going to get you in the door. I've been, we could deal with the business side of it. Now, mm-hmm. once, you know, uh, I mean, it is what it is. I'm in, believe it or not, the boxing business is shady. As long as you have somebody who understands that. Yeah. I mean, will it be easy? Absolutely not. But we can navigate it. Like now we're navigating the business side of what we do, mm-hmm. right? Especially being from North Carolina and, so there's I, I I've been able to again coach Massey, man. I, I credit him with a lot of this, man. Mm. Just teaching me, man, the business side of this. So us navigating it, we we gotta deal with shit, man. But yeah. my thing to them is that you could co- you could control, man, your work ethic, mm-hmm. getting better, mm-hmm. being better yeah. than you were the day before. And that, I think, man, that is what's ultimately gonna open up the door for all of them. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of business stuff do you think the, a fighter needs to know? Oh, man, that's a really good. Because like, it usually is up to the coach. Coach is dealing with uh, setting up fights and stuff like that, you know? Yeah, so um, from the business side, really, uh, uh, the, the fighter has to understand their value. Okay. And we, we see and when people talk about the business side of, of just the fight game in general, I think, you know, if, you, if we're talking UFC, mm-hmm. they've done a really good job of, uh, and I hate to say it this way, I don't necessarily exploit, but it's, it's the, the business, they understand, um, um, uh, for lack of a better term, man, it's the, it's the pimp and the prostitute mm-hmm. um, thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that that's kind of what we're talking about, man. But from a fighter pers- perspective, if a fighter understands their value, then that controls the relationship. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. That's what really controls the relationship. Talking about like when they're networking and all that stuff. Well, I'm talking about just for so the 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 product is the fighter. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if the fighter doesn't, you see it on all the platforms. Honestly, man, that we we I like the conversation we're having today, man. We're kind of all over the place with it, but a couple of years back, uh, with the whole Black Lives Matter movement, mm-hmm. and we, we, you see the Colin Kaepernick thing. Mm-hmm. What would happen with these leagues if every player decided to say, "I'm not going to play until shit changes"? Yeah, things would change. Yeah, change, <laughs> right? So, from a fighter's perspective, when you ask me, like, would they, would, would they have the would, do they need to understand is the value piece mm. of it, right? Is is if you understand your value, then when you go to the table and negotiate, mm. the negotiation is a little different. Oh, right. Yeah. That's it's like you know, it's, it's the same. It's the it's any business principle. The mm. the the problem with the fighter is that most times they're not educated. They don't understand that part, and they're just happy to fight. So mm. for them, the win is the fight, and now. Especially with this generation, with we got Inspired Voices podcast, or they're happy with just looking cool, yeah, being on the podcast, yeah, getting a, a ten thousand likes on Instagram, mm-hmm. where that doesn't necessarily translate to hardcore money and opportunity for for you to be able to take care of your family, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so you know, well, my guys, man, I'm on them. Do they always listen, man? Not necessarily, but I, I make sure they understand uh, the business side of this, and more importantly, their value. Yeah. Right. Mm, interesting. The value. Yeah, man. Yeah, because I, I used to, I used to teach actors, right? As mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and so we, mm-hmm. we're, we're not only teaching them acting, we're teaching them the business side of acting as well. Mm-hmm. Same concept. And a lot of people don't know about that. Yep. Same concept. And so, yeah, yeah, same concept. And um, oh, that's very, that's interesting. Yeah, the value thing. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because <laughs> it's, it's almost to me that kind of reminds me of uh, uh, confidence, mm-hmm. like. The way, if you value yourself to a certain point, you're going to carry yourself at a certain point. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And so that's when the, the confidence mm-hmm. kind of kicks in. Yeah. I, I, you know, it, it, in our world, though, it has to, right, because being confident, yeah, I'm not saying be an asshole. Let me Right, please, yeah. There's a fine right. line. Okay. That's <laughs> there's it. a fine because, line. Because truthfully, there's, you know, what I'm saying is the way that it looks practically, mm-hmm. What I'm saying is, 
Um, you know, for us as North Carolina fighters, mm -hmm. you know, I get calls every day about my guys, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a perception that we're the easy win, you know, we're the pass state, right? So I gotcha. get calls from all these big time promoters and managers asking, hey, you know, they'll, they'll look, here's an opportunity to fight on a top ranked card. Uh, we'll give your guy uh, X amount of money, which to them probably sounds like a lot of money, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Uh, we'll put you in a hotel for for the, a five star hotel for the weekend, right? Yeah, they're looking at that. You know, if you're not, if you don't understand your value, you'll look at that and you'll say, "Oh, let me go." And I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen it with the with the North Carolina guys, man. You look at that and you say, "Oh, gotcha. this is an opportunity." But what I know is that they're bringing us in the fight. An Olympian, some of the stack, the 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 odds are stacked against us mm -hmm. in that scenario. Yeah, it's a but shitty deal. Absolutely, we know. Well, I know what it is. Trying to get the kids to understand that is the thing, mm. right? But when you understand your value, you understand that I don't have to take. It, gotcha. Right. This yeah. is not a scenario that That's I true. have to take. Mm -hmm. I could keep working. I could keep honing my craft, mm -hmm. doing what I do, and I could be the guy on the other side of that. Mm -hmm. Right. Where, they're, where we're calling people and we're getting these guys to come in and seeing what they'll take if they don't understand their value, mm -hmm. right? That's where that's how it looks gotcha. for my guys in our world, hmm. all right? That's the understanding that I think um, a lot of fighters have. You see it happening a little bit in the UFC, man. Oh, yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and then, mm -hmm. so how much, because you got the business side? Mm -hmm. You got the actual fighting side mm -hmm. and then you have the mindset. Mm, that's it. And so like when you go to the training camps and all that stuff, mm -hmm. uh, how much of that is you talk about mindset? Yeah. I th so it is, um, man, it, it is. I have my guys, my guys have a chip on their shoulder. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. So I say that to say there's not, we don't cut that switch on and off. Like, okay. I don't, that's not a switch that gets cut on and off. Yeah. There's a clear understanding with my guys that we're the get it out the mud guys. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, so every time we go into a fight, it's an opportunity to show the world that it doesn't fuck have an NC on our back. We're going to be there too. Yeah. I, I, and I tell every, all my guys this all the time, the, the fighter that's going to train, that's going to change the way people see North Carolina boxing is going to come out of my gym. Mm. Or I'm going to, I'm going to have something. I, man, I'm blessed. I blessed have, there's another guy, Joe Jackson mm. here in North Carolina that I don't think people are making, uh, that are giving enough credit mm. to, man. This kid been on Showtime, all these places, man, with the North Carolina on his back and all he keeps doing is winning. Okay. All right? Yeah. But I'm saying that to say I've, I've been blessed to have the opportunity just to work with him a little bit. Yeah. Right. So I'm saying that to say when you talk about the kid, man, the mindset that I have with anybody that comes in to work with me. And if you're from North Carolina and you say you want to be a world champion one day is that we have to get it out the mud. Mm. Nobody respects you. You're going to have to earn everything that you get. Mm -hmm. Right. And nobody's going to give you anything. Yeah. So if you don't have that mentality, right, then we, it's probably not going to work well with you. And I. It's not just because I'm a trainer and you're a fighter, that doesn't, you know, <laughs> it doesn't mean it's going to work. But right. if you don't have that, I got to go earn it mentality, then it's not going to work. And my guys, they're, they're guys that want to that, that wanna earn it. Yeah. So right. do you, I guess when people, when you see that, you know, it's, it's not going to work out, or as far as like, you're not gonna be world champion because of this, you know, kind of thing. Um, do you kind of step back and not coach them through fights and stuff like that? Like, where, where's the where's the line? Yeah, so <laughs> man, that's a really, I'm getting to the point now, right? Where, uh, see so much of what I do, that's even earlier on you asked like, okay, the, the first time, the first take you asked, Okay, just what do you do, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am a, 
I am a business owner first. That's what I like to tell people. Mm -hmm. I'm a boxing, the head boxing coach. But beyond all of that, man, uh, man, I'm a mentor. I'm a father for some of my kids. I'm the only dad that they ever see, right? Right, right. So to go back to why I do what I do, it's bigger than the boxing is what I'm getting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, some kids come in and they're not going to be world champions, man. But I know for sure they're going to be better people, mm. right? So it's bigger than just the boxing. Yeah, right? I am getting to, but but to, to answer your question directly, though, I'm getting to the point where I'm learning how to uh, not give so much. Ah, uh, yeah. right. It's not give so much, or lit, or better yet, better way of putting it is. I'm, I'm stepping back from being the one pulling the sled all the time. Because they have to be the ones that Absolutely. do it. Absolutely. Yeah, if right. they really want it. So if you're pulling, that lets me know everything I need to know. Mm. What kind of energy I need to put into you. Right. As long as you're the one pulling it, I, I'm with you a thousand percent. Hmm. When I look and I see, okay, all right, this is, he's expecting me to do all the pulling. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Then I, okay, I know how to adjust my energy and my time. Interesting. Yep. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I had to learn it. I'm learning. It. Right. <laughs> yeah, man, that's interesting. I, I like that though. That's really good because you also you have the fitness side as well. I do. Right. I do. And so, how's that going for you? It's good, man. It's it's uh, it's how's it's, the gym going in general? Honestly, gym is good, man. The yeah. gym is to be honest with you, man. We're, we're grown. Actually, I'll say this: we we've kind of plateaued at a number. Okay. Right. Uh, there was a number that we really pushed for. We hit it. Mm -hmm. And I've kind of been stuck there. Mm -hmm. So from now the business, the business owner is talking now, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I think that we're doing really well. Brought in um, uh, some some trainers who are oh, cool. man, amazing. I have, a, um, you know, some even some, some other people that I'm putting in some positions to kind of assist me along the way. So it's coming together. Nice. Um, from a fitness side, though, I think we could be doing better. Mm. Right, I think we could do better. I'm, I'm, I'm. We're actually going into 2024, man. We got some really, really cool things that we're gonna be putting out. That's gonna kind of help get that that business. I mean, I'm sorry that that fitness side mm. going the way that I would like for it to be going. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very yeah. good. Part of it, though, man, it honestly is because I've been known for the savage stuff for so long. Yeah. Trying to get people to warm up to the fitness side of what we yeah. do. I appreciate it. We're, we're nice guys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? yeah, Which I, man, I, like I said, man, yeah. I get that from your gym. Yeah, man. Humble, respect. Yeah. Always wanting to work. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yeah, I was man. like, oh, shit. Yeah, man. It's Good not time It's time not time. like a, and it's not like soldiers or anything like that. Yeah. It's it's like good, honest human beings. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's what I tend to attract, man. Mm -hmm. That's good. A lot of attraction. Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's, it. that's it. Do you, uh, I know you said you, you, are the dad to a, some of these guys mm -hmm. that never have one. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel like uh, your inner child is healed more because of that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think the reason why uh, I'm, I'm, I do as well as I do with them man, is, mm -hmm. is for that reason. They're just a much, as much of a blessing to me as I am to them. Mm -hmm. Right? So yeah. I, 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 uh, it allows me to, to be the coach, the dad, all these things that I, I, I give them what I never had. Yeah. Right. I guess that was the feeling for me. Right. Right. Yeah. That's probably the, um, yeah. uh, that's probably how it was a big part of why you were able to forgive your mom with a lot of things too. I feel like, right. Yeah, man. They, it, yeah. Yeah. I, I, well, um, it, it helped mm -hmm. as far as like, you know, being the parent. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, you know, it, it, I mean, that's twofold. It was twofold. It was twofold. It, for me, part of it was, man, I'm giving everything and I'm, I'm it, it could be resent. I could get resentful at times, mm -hmm. right? Because I know how I, I see to see people and these kids in general. And I'm, there would be times I look at like, damn, man, I wish my mother looked at me. How <laughs> right, can my right. mom not? Right, so yeah. I had that. But that that process was more about me mm. looking in the mirror and saying, "Okay, I had to get to a point in time where I can't blame everybody for everything." Like it happened, right? You, you're 
I mean, I was 35 years old at the time, and I really started, you know, going through the process of uh, dealing with the trauma, mm -hmm. right? Oh, that's when you started dealing with it? Yeah, man. Wow. Hey, it was late, man. Yeah, it was man. late for me. Man, it was late. Man. You know? it, it was late. Man, I'm 45 now. Mm. About 46. Uh, <laughs> anyway, right. man. We'll bleep that out. Bleep that part out. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying, like, you know, for me, it was, that was what really did it for me. It was mm -hmm. the, the second I had to look in the, I can't blame anybody. After a while, your decisions, your bad decisions are your bad decisions, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. No matter uh, that you were, when you were younger, you were molested and all that. Uh, eventually, man, you got to be accountable for your actions, right? Yeah. And you can't blame your mom. You can't blame what you didn't have. Mm -hmm. You can't blame. You got to look at you and say, you know what? I want to be better. I want better. From this day on, it is going. Something's got to change. Yeah, yeah. And that's what did it for me. Wow. That's what did it for me. Was it the what was it though? What was the, was there something specific that triggered that? Yeah. Well, I mean, it, honestly, it was a conversation, man. Believe it oh, or yeah. not, it was that simple. Sometimes, man. yeah, that's, man, you need those. Man, it was Oliver. Man, it was it was me just going to my mom and asking her oh. about. A specific to the situation. Yep. Hmm. Do you remember this happened? Mm -hmm. Right? And, and why? And asking the question why. Right? And not and not worrying about controlling what the response would be. Right? Mm, that's a big part. Right? Mm -hmm. And not worrying about not being satisfied with the, what the answer was. Just accepting the answer for what it was and letting that be. Damn enough right now in that from that conversation man you know again like i said there's triggers you know there have been times sure you mm -hmm. know where we you know where i've been triggered mm -hmm. to stay away and all the shit that i used to my my defense mechanisms man but mm -hmm. i can remember that conversation is really what kind of changed the trajectory of how i saw my mom how i dealt with her hmm. you know yeah, how I would have been able to now, man, believe, man, I love my mom to death, man. We, we like I said a couple of weeks ago, we kind of went back and forth about that MJ yeah. thing, man. I was there with my mom, man. Right, yeah. Good, good, man. man yeah. Great time, man. Plan on taking it to. That's the good thing about know. healing, man. Yep. It's like you, you, yeah. you now get to a point where you want to enjoy that yeah, person. Absolutely. Right? Yep. Yeah, man. That's a good spot. Yeah. Um, so let's, let's go back to the fighter. Okay. So you were in college, you're fighting, you're boxing. Mm -hmm. um, you remember your first competition? Yeah, man. So, um, and, and this is what I tell people too, man. Believe it or not, I only have 14 amateur fights. Okay. Right. So in the um, in the amateur boxing world, in the boxing world, period, man, that's not, um, you know, I don't, it's not from an experience standpoint, it's not a whole lot. Right. 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 Um, you know, and I was, man. I, I was so I went I was twelve and two, so mm. I only lost twice. Mm. Um, you know, but I I I when I look back on on uh just the boxing part, man, I was the kid that I don't want right now. Right? So um You mean when you first started? Yeah. yeah. I mean just when I fought, period. Just when you fought, period. Period, man. Yeah. I was I was the kid that I don't want. Right, right. Right. So I student. wasn't I wasn't Coach Kenny. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I wasn't I wasted and I tell when I talk to Coach Massey, man, I tell him all the time. I now being on this side of it, mm -hmm. I, I tell him all the time, man, uh, how much I appreciate him. Right. And that I and I apologize, man. And I was, you know, I would go to the gym, not pay my gym dues, or doing shit like that, man, mm -hmm. you know, and, and wasting his time. Right. So yeah. um you know that he still gave you a chance. Oh, absolutely. Well, I'm not. Well, Coach Massey is a whole. That's a whole nother man. He's a uh, love him, love, man, love him. But he's learned throughout the years too. Now he's uh, he doesn't waste a whole lot of his time. Right. Even though he's still, you know, he's still. We have conversations now, man, where he, um, you know, where that lover part of him is still. Man, he loves what he does, and he loves. And the demographic that he works with, but mm -hmm. trying to find that balance between when you get a kid like I was, man, just saying, you know, backing away. Yeah. You know, we talk about. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
So. That, that, yeah. I feel like that has to be a little tough to back away from a kid like that because you want to help that kid. That's the death. That's the balance. <laughs> but like, when when do you back away? Yeah. So that's you know what I mean? it, it, that is that's the that's the balance to what we do right? mm-hmm. as a coach, man. You know, mm-hmm. that's a you know that that's. You know, when I tell when people ask about coaching, man, it's bigger than the X's and O's. If you're a coach that really cares, right? Right, right. So it's bigger than the X's and O's, man. You gotta, man. I, I've sacrificed quite a bit. I'm, I'm, I sacrifice, man. I miss football games, uh, mm. uh, cheerleading events, mm-hmm. man. You know, they, just to say, if, speak frankly, man. My wife has been uh, on her way out the door because of what I do, right? Right. And putting other kids before mine. You know, mm. I'm I've been guilty of doing that. You know. Mm. Um So you yeah. had to learn that balance. Yeah, hey, man, still learning it. Yeah. You know, still still learning it. Still 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 learning it, man. Still still Do you learning. think it's a forever thing? It is, man. You know, it it is. You gotta well, again, to get back to the point that we were making is what I was saying earlier, you I'm learning to Look and, and analyze who's pulling the sled and who's not. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Mm-hmm. So you and pulling the sled doesn't necessarily mean the but just the box and stuff, man. Mm-hmm. You know that's what I'm saying. Like it's bigger than that. Pulling the sled is you know I had some situations man with kids that I know really good kids that aren't gonna be. I mean they they they're gym fighters man, but the the relationships that they have outside of the gym like when their mom is calling me all the time. Mm-hmm. About the same shit over and over again. What do you do about that? That's what I'm saying. Now you look and see, are you with the resp- like, are you getting better? Mm. Right? That's the challenge that I have for everybody who walks in my gym. Gotcha. Right? Uh, uh, part of our theme for 2024, right? Yeah. But um, that's the challenge, man. You have to be better, mm-hmm. right? That's what I, I mean. So if you, you know, that's personally. Uh, that's obviously, you know, uh, in the gym. And then we going into, again, I'm plugging the new year, right? Going into, you know, from a technical standpoint, from uh, we, we health assessments, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, man, your relationships, especially when we talk about the demographic of these kids, man. Mm-hmm. Listen, mom can't keep calling me about the same thing. Right, right. Right. Well, you get that all the time, right? I, I mean, I do. I do. But again, you know. Like, you, but what do you do with that information? Do you, like, make them do more push-ups or something? Yeah, <laughs> or like, cool. yeah so, man, it dep- it, it kind of depends, man. So it's something yeah. else I think, uh, man, as a coach, man, we have to, like, what motivates people is different, mm. right? So each kid, everybody that walks through my gym, man, I, whenever somebody walks through the door, I mean, it's either for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And I know that that sounds cliche-ish, man, but for me, I, I mean, there are individuals I have, right now we got 135 members. Mm-hmm. And there's 135 different personalities that God has allowed me to lead in some form or fashion. Yeah. And each one of them are different. So what, what's going to get this kid to push-ups might be for one kid. Gotcha. Another kid, okay. man, is, is is a conversation. Believe it or not, for a lot of them, man, is is positive reinforcement. Mm. Right? What, what amazes me sometimes is I get kids, man, that people are having a hard time with. Man, in in my gym, man, they are man, they're the leaders. They're the ones leading the way, and I don't mm. get half half of the problems with them that some other people do. Mm. And uh, and so and really, what I attest that to sometimes is sometimes it's this. You know what? I'm man, good job. No, oh, thanks. Right? I never heard that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Good. Man, you remember what we started last week? Right. Positive Look at where we are right now, man. I'm telling you, man, keep work, keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. And now I can have the conversation when they get that. Now I can have the conversation. Listen, man. You know what really bothers me? Mom and your teacher, Mrs. Robinson, don't see the same stuff that I get to see every day in here. Mm. If mm. you could be this for me, you could be this for mom. You could be this for mom. Mm-hmm. You could be for Miss. I know you. And I know yourself. Right. Right. 
Right. So that's that's our job. That's right. So it's bigger than the X's and O's, man. Yeah. So much, so much bigger than the X's and O's. My yeah. job is to try to get the best out of everybody. Mm-hmm. Now everybody who comes in and that looks different for everybody. Yeah. My guys are different. Like you got a chance to video that you did for I tell people all the time, man, that wise man video. Yeah. That was a fun one. Bro, man, you he looked like a superhero. <laughs> yeah. He looked like a superhero, yeah. man. <laughs> right, but I say that to say he's a guy that's motivated by stuff like that. Right, ah, right. right. When he sees that video, I know, man. Every time I, when I post that video, man, or he sees it, mm-hmm. if I show that video to him before he gets in the ring, man, he, somebody's he's gonna ready die. for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then I got another kid, man, who's look. He needs the X's and O's. Mm-hmm. He needs to. They say, okay, look. Technically, here's what we what we need to do, right. You know, yeah. you know what I mean? So it's, 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 that's our job, man. Finding ways to get the best out of everybody that yeah comes in our path, man. And I think a good coach also is um, not just boxing coach, but just teacher, Absolutely. coach Absolutely. in general is the, to talk in a way that everybody understands as well when you're talking to a group Absolutely. class, right? Yep. That's, and, and they all understand it. Absolutely. Right. That makes a big difference. Yeah. Being effective, man. Yeah. That's our job, man. How... How can I be effective? Yeah, the most effective. Master, most effective. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah, man. I think about that too. Yeah, man. I think I'm, an, I'm a natural teacher, you know, because everything I do, I end up teaching somebody, whether yeah. it be in a class or individually. Hey, man, it's, it just like on our way in, we talked about that a little bit, man. Another one of my right. boys, Sam, man, just oh, credits right, yeah. you with uh, really bringing the best out of him in the acting world. Yeah. You, you get credit for that, man. I yep. appreciate that. Hey. Sometimes I forget. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, you know, you were doing these competitions and stuff uh, like that. When did you, when did, did you ever, did you ever teach while you were competing? I didn't. Nope. I when didn't. did you start teaching? Yeah. So, so, um, you know, obviously my son, I had my son. So mm-hmm. my son, he, you know, once he was born, I started working with him a bit. Okay. Right. Um, but the, 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 I, there was a kid that came, there was a barber in my barber shop that asked me every day for like five years. He would see me work with my son when he, when we, when he came to the, when we went to get our hair cut. Yeah. Every, every time I would go in the gym, he would ask me to train him. Mm. And I'm like, and I would tell him, nah, you know, it's not a, not really. And even with my son, I didn't plan on him fighting. It was the thing where you got to learn how to protect yourself. Yeah, yeah. So I never even had the thought of, of being a trainer. Mm. He calls me one day because his nephew, he, his nephew called him out the blue. He says, listen, he was in Ohio at the time. Yeah. He's like, look, I don't like where I am. I know you don't know me, but can you take me in? Hmm. Uh, for some reason, he felt compelled to get his nephew. Right? So he calls me. He's like, Kenny, look, I got my nephew coming. I don't know. I got a feeling I'm going to need you for this one. Right. Right. So I'm like, okay, but I think the boxing thing will help. So one day after work, I get off of work. He's like, man, just come by. Just show him a little something. Mm-hmm. So I go by and I work with him and his nephew for like an hour, hour and a half. Mm-hmm. And he gives me $40 to do it. Okay. He gave me $40 to do it. Yeah. At that point, the wheels started turning a little bit. Yeah. Right? It started turning a little bit. I didn't, I never really saw, um, you know, Yeah. I didn't see uh, training. Right, 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 right. But he did that and that kind of, and then obviously, man, this, this, the same guy for, for a year, I was working with him and his nephew, but he would pull, he was just pushing. He would just kind of push me. Hmm. Hey man, look, you should think about you should think about getting a gym and blah blah blah. And I would, and at the time I was, I'm just like, nah, you know, I'm corporate America. Yeah, right? it's not you. Exactly. Kind of I'm yeah. doing my thing, you know. It was a thing of the past. And, but mm-hmm. he would he would push. And then I had another buddy right around the same time. He has a karate dojo mm-hmm. who got on with the city. Mm-hmm. So he started his dojo with the city, and he's like, Kenny, look. I know you've been doing the body. Y'all see you doing the boxing thing. Uh, it was, I forgot which one, but he was like, look, 
we can let man you could go through the city but and i'm just at the time i'm still like nah nah and i thought about it one day i said you know what let me go and talk to somebody at the city it was carolina pines i went and talked mm-hmm. to a lady there uh she was open to the idea yeah um you know i went out bought a whole bunch of box and stuff mm-hmm. and decided to start a class there did it for a year and a half and probably had like at her place or at, at Carolina Ponds, the city of Raleigh. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, the city of Raleigh. And what, um, is, what was Carolina Ponds? What is it? So it's a rec center. So Carolina oh, okay, Ponds gotcha. is a rec center gotcha. in the city of Raleigh. All right. Yep. Yeah. Um, did it there? Uh, uh, probably about a year or so. Might have had four people signed up with me mm-hmm. <laughs> at the time, <Yeah>. maybe. <laughs> um, Left there, 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 man. It was it's it's crazy how all this happened, bro. Yeah, it seems yeah. like it. Yeah, man. I mean, I will say this. Yeah, that the more you talk about something, eventually something's gonna happen. Absolutely. And I think that's what happened here. I believe that. <laughs> I believe that wholeheartedly, man. Mm-hmm. Just the fast fast forward the story a bit. I got uh, there was an opportunity with Haven House mm-hmm. second round, which is a um, a program that's still here, that's still around. Uh, for uh, at-risk youth okay. in Raleigh, uh, a head coaching position became available. Hmm. Part time for boxing or boxing. Okay. Yep. Head coach bo- uh, boxing opportunity became. And hmm. actually, Coach Massey is the one who told me about it. Hmm. So I go over one day, just kind of talking with him, and next thing I know, I'm the the head coach over at second round. There you go. And, and, and from there, man, it just kind of. Kind of took it kind of it kind of blossomed, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So y- you were working there, but then how did Pride come in? Yeah, so man, so I was working there. Uh, actually, I quit my job. In the in in the goal was to try to. I, I let TJ. His name was TJ. Taught me in the going. So I quit my job. Got the 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 position as a head coach. Mm-hmm. And there was another guy, another gym, small gym. It wasn't even a boxing gym off of New Bern Avenue, Results Fitness, Jeremy mm-hmm. Gray. He allowed me to bring my kids after hours to his, to his gym just to get some extra work in. Yeah. So I was doing that. I was Ubering, and I was um, uh, going over to Jeremy's spot, mm-hmm. trying to figure out what I was going to do with this whole uh, gym thing. Yeah. Man, it, it, man, well, honestly, it was kind of unfortunate, but a blessing at the same time. My wife has MS. Mm. You know, my wife has M- a multiple sclerosis, so there was uh, a time where you know we were pushing to try to get disability. Mm. Was that yeah. like uh, throughout the whole time you've known her, yeah. or no, no, uh, so this this was, no, nah, this was uh, well, she's probably been she's been diagnosed now. With, I think we what fifteen years. Now. Oh wow. Oh, no, no, no. I was my daughter, maybe 12 years. Okay. 12 years, I think uh, it'd be 13 years in January. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, long story short, man, we, we, um, you know, I, I was Ubering. She, she was awarded uh, her, her disability out of the blue. Mm. Right. And uh, which wasn't a lot of money, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be honest with you, but it did allow for me to be able to get some bags, mm. some stuff, and being there, it allowed me to be able to open up a little storefront. Really? Yeah. I bet that was. How was that for you? Was that scary? Scary? <laughs> I, man, you know what? Because like now you have responsibilities. You got other bills now. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It, man, you know what? It, again, uh, and I, this is a story I tell you, man. I didn't understand the business side of it at, at that point. Mm. It was still the passion. I was still working on the passion. Oh, interesting. Right? So even there, for me, what it was, was a place to be able to bring my guys uh, after the gym, you know, so we could get some extra. Where at the time, man, we were all over the cut, man. We were in. I was still spending my own money mm. that I didn't have, bringing them to New York. I mean, we were in uh, Cleveland, mm-hmm. D.C. every weekend. I mean, I, we were, I was committed to getting them to the next level. I wasn't thinking business. We were, yeah. man, I was in my, we were going in our own money. I was, my wife was 
pissed off, man. Yeah. Shit, because I'm spending house money to make the gym shit happen. Mm. You know, um, it really wasn't until I moved to where I am now, the pretty gym, right. where the business side, and I credit that with another really good mentor. You know what I okay. mean? Um, just kind of get me to see the business side. Next door, it was just like, when we were next door with where we were now, where we are mm -hmm. now. Right, right. And it was just, man, shit, we here, man, we, we, we it's, it's the passion. Yeah. We got somewhere to train, and if I need to sleep in the gym, I'll sleep in the gym. Right, right. Yeah. Right. So, so did you always have a mentor? I did not. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. It was only when you moved to that new spot. Yeah, man. And that, going. man, that was another miraculous situation, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, I know what I'm doing is divine, man. It was <laughs> a, ma man, it was uh, um, Greg Lowen Um mm -hmm. he, He's, uh, he's done, he, he, he owned Hopscotch Festival. He owned that for a while. Okay. Um, but he walked into my gym one day. I was like, listen, man, uh, I like what you're doing. We need to sit down and talk about it. Mm. This is a white guy. You know, I'm walking in the gym. I'm like, man, this guy's going to try to smoke me out. I don't know what he <laughs> right. Is. He's going to build a title. It's in it for you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that kind of thing. Yep, man. But long story short, man, we end up developing a, um, a really, really, really good relationship, man. And I credit him with, with, uh, changing my lens, mm. turning me into, uh, or making me see the business side of what I do, how this could not necessarily just, uh, I mean, it could be profitable. Right. You could do your passion, live in your passion, and still make money doing it. Yeah. Right. Right. So that's really when the wheels started turning. Yeah. That's great that you had a, had that mentorship. Yeah, I, man. Yeah. That's, I feel like that's important for a lot of business owners. Well, every business owner. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's key. It was key for me. Mm -hmm. Key for me. I think that's the reason why entrepreneurs kind of attract each other too. Yeah. It's because like we kind of like take tip, trips, uh, tips and, and tricks absolutely. from each other and stuff yeah. like that. I, I, absolutely, mm -hmm. man. Even now, it's, it's funny. Now I'm on the other side a little bit. Mm -hmm. So people come in and they see where we started. All right, I have people come and they see when I was over at off of New Bern Avenue, man, and they walk into the gym now, and they're like, wow, man, what? How <laughs> so did this up. happen? Yeah, right. well, I have some come over when I was over at the uh, the center. Mm -hmm. They're looking, it's like, wow. Man. And now I'm having those same conversations with people yeah. that Greg had with me, mm. right? About, nice. you know what I mean? Like separating the 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 passion and purpose piece from the business piece. Mm -hmm. They're two totally different. Yep. If you operate in passion mm -hmm. and purpose, man, your business is going to suffer. Yeah, right? exactly. So in, in, in really understanding that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's, that was, that's when the light bulb went off for me. Mm -hmm. And I understood the difference between the two. Right. right? So yeah, you yeah, built man. that self-awareness of it. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yep. Self awareness, man. It's the key. Uh, the key. The key to life. To a life. successful life. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I agree. And here you are, man. On I'm on Inspire Voices <laughs> with my man Oliver. Man. Hey. That's what it is. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you. Thanks for Thank coming, you. man. Absolutely. Uh yeah. that's it, dude. That's it. Oliver. <laughs> bro. This was fun. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I I knew you had some stories in you. Yeah, man. I wanted to pick fun. your brain. Yeah, this you know was I mean? fun. So. Wow. Honestly, man, this was uh, and this was refreshing. <laughs> this is therapeutic. Yeah, yeah, right? I think uh, some people have said that it's like therapeutic for them. <laughs>